Well, welcome back to the shed, and uh, I've got something um, rather odd here today, just for a change. It's actually made by Hinari, well that's what it says on it. And it must have been quite a nice thing in its time, but I should think it's mid to late 80s, a LED power meter. Something like a mains only boom box, I suppose. But one nice feature is it's got a separate equaliser for each channel. And then you've got your balance control there. All very strange indeed. But it gets stranger when you look inside it. There are two tape decks. They're both driven by the same motor. But have a look at this CD player. This is the early type of swinging arm CD player. As far as I can tell, the mechanism itself is called a CD4 stroke 19. And it is definitely an invention of Philips. DK100 is the model. I'm afraid the CD player doesn't want to know, which apparently is odd because they're pretty bomb-proof, those things. And you can see here the carrier for the LEDs is electromagnetically controlled on very fine bearings indeed. The little motor above spins the CD in the usual way. But when you switch this on, all you get is clack, and the thing travels towards the end of its travel, and that's it. It won't, uh, it won't have it. Rather nice and unusual transformer. Here, almost a sort of toroidal sort of thing, I suppose. Very strange beast indeed. And the Phillips influence continues with the tape mechanisms which, as you can see, are like their boom boxes were around the 80s and early 90s, even down to the infamous orange wheels. Now, I don't know whether those orange wheels are made of the same red Leicester cheese that, uh, or Gouda cheese wax that Philips proper used on their kit, or whether they're pattern parts. <laughs> But uh, as the CD won't work anyway, I'm uh, tempted to just take it apart for spares, really. It's a bit of a shame, because it would have been very interesting indeed to get this to work. And now I think about it, I've probably got a couple of other machines that uh, have CD players on them. Uh, one's a separate, and the other is a music system from about the same time that this looks to be. And they will have that swinging arm mechanism too. Well, they were reckoned to be a really good bomb-proof design. Probably the older you get, the better, because uh, this one is made of very heavy gauge, high quality plastic, sort of resin casting. But the earlier ones than that were actually made of metal. Uh, looks as if they were uh, alloy of some sort. What does surprise me, though, about this is, having gone to all the trouble of using that uh, rather nice and a very unusual mechanism for the CD, the tape deck is driven by only one motor, like a boombox. But as you can see, it's full of Philips components. If you lift this circuit board up, all the ICs underneath have Philips on them. And yet, coming over here, I can see some that say Taytung on them. So, this is a bit of a hybrid. It's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? It's not really a clone. It's, um, well, who can say what it is, really? I think somebody's been in there before me, because they've certainly trapped that lead rather badly. But, uh, I have to be careful of that if we do decide to try and resurrect this poor old thing. 
My guess is that uh, it probably sounded quite nice when it, when it was all uh, up and running. It's got spring-loaded connectors, similar to sort of, uh, well, how shall I say, proper hi-fi equipment on the back. And then uh, you've got inputs as well. RCA type, they've finally abandoned the old 5-pin DIN socket on this. But I thought it might be worth showing you, because it is a bit of a strange old beast, and uh, I say probably hasn't got much of a future really. Which is a pity, because it's quite nice and clean inside. But while tape decks are my thing, I'm afraid CD players, and especially strange ones like that, Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, the lens on this, incidentally, will be actually made of glass. And that was something else. They didn't use plastic on those. So, uh, yeah, if you've got one of these mechanisms in a CD player and it's still going, it's worth hanging on to by all accounts. Anyway, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this look at... Uh, what must surely be a very strange thing from the 80s. It seems to have, at first glance, a triple cassette, but hasn't really. See, they work fine. Uh, I've tried uh, firing that up and everything motors, but what I can't get is any response from this at all, but it'll spin half a turn at a go, say, Nothing comes up on here whatsoever. This is the display for it. So I think we can say that uh, Mr. Hinari is probably dead. Long, medium, FM, FM stereo there. And here's your function switches, which are clunky despite the, uh, the appearance. Uh, also, there is so you could, if you wanted to, I suppose, connect a record deck to it. And the infamous CD down there. It boasts uh, 30 watts music power. Hmm, whatever that is in RMS. <laughs> Probably about five per channel, I should think. But still enough to um, annoy the neighbours, shall I say, if the sound was right. And don't be fooled by this either, it says down and up. It is a mechanical thing using a cord to move a pointer in the usual time on of way. So there we are, a bit of unusual old junk from the 80s. I say probably uh, I won't be resurrected. <laughs> See you soon.